The Centrum Assembly's original colonization of Tantalus's southeastern frontier was a rapid and often short-sighted process, and the ramifications of this approach continued to be felt by the frontier's population for decades afterward. One such issue was the lawless nature of frontier space, having been continually neglected in parliamentary budget allocations for security and infrastructure. In a bid to control increasingly rampant piracy in the region, the Frontier Union Party repeatedly petitioned the Assembly Parliament for assistance, and in a rare success, their efforts eventually convinced the Assembly to assign a number of lightly armed Linford Island-class coastal defence ships to the region. It was well understood that the Union would be very unlikely to see a similar act of support from Parliament any time soon, and as such, efforts were made to extend the lifespan of these small vessels far beyond their design parameters. As the decades passed and the ships suffered technical problems, many were stripped down to a simpler and more skeletal frame that could be easily maintained with local resources and facilities. And eventually, this improvised design became a blueprint for entirely new vessels that could be constructed at even the most basic shipyards using aftermarket components of the Linford Island class imported from the assembly proper. By 275 PCU, the skies of the Frontier Union were no longer protected by aged Centron warships, but by the Florencia class Outrider. At a length of 116.8 meters and a width of 56.78 meters, the Florencia presents a distinctive twin-hulled catamaran frame known as the Naigandano frame in contemporary Teldrani, that would later become the defining characteristic of frontier Union warships. Most often carrying a crew of 58 militia partisans, the Florencia is lightly armoured, but easy to operate and maintain, with its Spartan frame affording an extremely favourable thrust-to-mass ratio for rapid changes in velocity. Most of the frontier Union's later warships would be equipped with coilless railguns as a cost-saving measure to preclude the need for expensive ferromagnetic ammunition. But the Florencia class has always retained the four Bodkinlock light coilgun turrets left over from its original Centron design. These weapons are most often supported by at least four aspect-seeking torpedoes, normally of Mauritian origin, which are stored in external hardpoints around the ship's frame. Aside from basic chaff and flare launchers and the capacity to replace some of its torpedoes with interceptor missiles, the Florencia lacks standard point defense systems, and following the outbreak of war, the vessel was almost universally deployed alongside fighter drones, flakboats, or other warships for missile defense. The dorsal and ventral surfaces of the Florencia class feature large connecting plates dotted with mechanical docking clamps. These plates are used to fit the vessel with various types of pannaron, or backpack, these being improvised utility packages, ranging from torpedo batteries loaded with high-power anti-capital warheads, to mine layers, fighter drone pads, and passenger habitats constructed from recycled prefab colony shelters. These packages add a huge degree of versatility to the Florencia class frame, and were used extensively and to great effect across the full length of the frontier wall. During the war, ships of the Florencia class, like almost all Union warships, were constructed at one of two locations, the overtaxed orbital dry docks of Sengian Wharf in the Dolstaff system, and the far more extensive facilities of Teldrin's Kadarin Dorai. Known across Tantalus and highly prized by the local Teldrin government, the Dorai is a stray comet captured by the gravity of the gas giant Mizudori, and then towed into orbit of Teldrin by Union vessels to be converted into an improvised shipyard. Naturally composed of frigid, firmly compacted ice around a dense metallic core, the equator of the comet has been carved into a deep trench through the exhaustive efforts of Union mining crews. And this trench now houses dozens of Spartan construction and repair yards for outriders and larger warships. 
supplied directly from Teldrin's surface, and by the solar system's incredibly lucrative fuel and gas mining economy, the Kadarin Dorai is responsible for much of Teldrin's dominating administrative influence over the frontier union. In attacks on CDF forces, the Florencia class was almost always employed as part of a practiced offensive tactic known as the Rangomu Lockstep. The Lockstep paired each Florencia with an Indria class outrider, with each pair remaining in a coordinated tandem for the length of the action. The faster Indria class would remain ahead of its partnered Florencia at all times, adopting an erratic and wildly aggressive stance, charging into point-blank range with its target, often maintaining a collision course until the last second. This would prompt Centron captains to briefly back their ships away in an attempt to reposition and defend themselves, while all the while, the partnered Florencia class would steadily match velocities to remain within the small ranging bracket that placed it just out of effective autogun range of the hostile vessel, but close enough for its own coil guns to continually fire with near-perfect accuracy. The target's own evasive maneuvers, provoked by the Indria, renders steady coil gun fire at the Florencia nearly impossible and any attempts to counter the Florencia at range with torpedo attacks would see the torpedoes shot down only meters out of their tubes by the Indria's autoguns, often trapping an inexperienced captain into a lethal cycle of reactionary orders as they struggled to escape this deadly snare. The lockstep ingeniously gives the appearance of a reckless and brazen attack from a tactless foe while carefully preparing to punish any commander foolish enough to make that assumption. The first real warship ever to serve the Union and by far the longest serving, the Florencia class shows no signs of approaching retirement, even into the early years of the 4th century PCU. Battle proven many times over across the 10 years of the Frontier War, the small and ramshackle vessel is rarely underestimated, as it often was a decade prior, and continues to stand watch over the southeastern frontier, as it has for almost 60 years.